Pastor had a, pastor had a limo waiting on me there. <laughs> you know, I always try to make sure that we take care of the bishops. We want to make sure that the the bishops, you know, that the 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 bishops of of Fresno have the best accommodations. And so praise the Lord, everybody. We are now live. <laughs> and we just sit here uh smiling and having good fellowship. Uh, because last night. Bishop Grisby missed his flight. He wasn't <laughs> able to be with us. And, you know, but but after after we talked to United and explained to them, they made sure he was on that first class flight tonight. <laughs> and so we forgive United. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is the cancel culture, so we won't boycott them. We're right, not going right. to boycott them. <laughs> you know, we'll we'll st we'll still use their services, but if they mess up again, it's over with. Oh. It's on. You bet not ever. All right. You know what I'm saying? All right. So no, we thank the Lord. How are you guys doing tonight? Doing good. Doing, doing good. good. Doing good, Pastor. God is good. Bless the no, Lord. No, no, you guys know I I love to be on with you guys and study the word with you. And quite frankly, you know, love all of our ministers and and elders and um you know i just love to break that word open with us because you know uh and it happened with what's happened to us lots of times but last night uh me and apostle randolph we had that cornelia moment <laughs> where you know where the holy spirit has us in lockstep yeah yeah you know, and like I was even looking at one of our um, broadcasts. By the way, those of you who are getting on, please like and share, like and share. Please, please, please like and share. I want to see it. I want to see sharer by your name. Um, but, you know, I was looking at um, our, our broadcast from Sunday. Uh -huh. And um, because of the distance to the pulpit and our software, it had my movements just a just a tad behind the sound. And sometimes when heaven is speaking, we're a tad behind mm -hmm. heaven's voice, if that makes sense. Yes. You know, so sometimes we're a hair behind, sometimes we're a minute behind, sometimes we're a day behind, sometimes we're a week behind. You know, God forbid, there's been times I've been months behind what heaven has spoken. Mm -hmm. But it's something very powerful when you are in lockstep with the voice of God. Yeah. And so tonight I'm praying that the Holy Spirit can bring us into alignment where we are in lockstep with the Holy Spirit and his word and, and be able to release into this atmosphere a shift in the spiritual environment, which will manifest itself naturally. Those of you who are coming on now, asking that you like and share. Um, and I actually want to open up and I'll, I'll pass it to the elders. But after this word of prayer, my question to those of you who were on last night is what are your reflections about woe or as it's pronounced in Hebrew, oi. So let me open up in prayer. And then, and those of you who are coming on, please introduce yourself, um, give a little praise report. And um, you might hear a little dog in the back. I'm going to try to get him to quiet down. He gets real lonely. He starts yelling out. But uh, we don't want that to distract uh, the power of God to move tonight because we have a word. Dear gracious Father, I bless you and glorify you. You're so good, so kind, so wonderful, so mighty, so excellent, so eternal, omnipresent, omnipotent the great God of the universe. I glorify you right now. I come asking, Lord, that you would be in the midst. You said wherever two or three are gathered in your name, you would be in the midst. So now, dear Lord God, be in the midst to perform. Be in the midst to bring peace. Be in the midst to bring healing. Be in the midst, dear Lord God, to bring salvation. Be in the midst, dear Lord God, to, to bring repentance and salvation to your people. Now, dear Lord God, we pray always that you turn the tide of this plague Dear Lord God, just blow the winds of this plague. Dear Lord God, turn it around right now. 
So my God, I ask that you would bless Fresno, bless Fresno County, bless California, bless America. And Lord, hold this world in your hand. In Jesus name, amen. amen. Well, we thank the Lord for his goodness and mercy. And I am on now. I was going to start a watch party, but I want some of you all to start watch parties. It's good to see uh, Michelle. Good to see Flo. Uh, good to see, um, let's see who else is on. All right. I'm not getting anybody else on. So I guess it's just like five of them on. Come on. Like and share, like and share. Make yourself known. Come on. Don't hide. Don't hide. Come on, Cletus. Come on. Come on, Cletus. Come on out. Come on out. We need to see who you are. <laughs> yes, we want to bless God with you. I had a wonderful day today. I was telling the elders that it started really early, uh, probably about 3.45 or so, 3.50, four, maybe, maybe at 3.50 or so, got up and had some meditation time and um, some prayer time and called out the name, called out to the name of the Lord, some of the saints, but just asking his mercy and and then he led me to psalm 119 mm. and what he had me to do elders this morning as i began reading i have it right here he had me to to actually write down and i don't know when he wants me to fulfill this but he said i want you to write my word in his completion mm. and so it's a project and this morning I wrote the first um, seven, no, eight, yes, eight verses. Um, and then I had some clarifying questions. It's almost like he was having me develop a workbook. So I just pushed that out and I was just writing down, writing down. And at one point, as I, cause I write in cursive. So at one point when I was writing, I heard him say, too fast. So I slowed down and I felt very guilty that I was scribbling the Lord's word and not taking my time um, to really uh, write it out. So he clearly has me in a space where he wants to do something in his word again. Um, elders, what are your thoughts about whoa uh, from yesterday's lesson? I'll start with Elder Randolph since he was here. Uh, what are your thoughts? And to the people of God, what are your thoughts about woe based on yesterday's lesson? Man, a, a, a monstrous sense of urgency. Mm. God, it, 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 God wants something done by his people now. Wow. Yeah, we, we sat around for long enough. And historically, God's people historically, especially when you look at the apostles and you look at our Lord and how they handled things, they, they always, they were moving with a sense of urgency. The apostles moved as if the Lord was going to come back within the next few minutes. That's the way they moved. And I'm getting that the Lord wants us to move in that very same urgency. So when I hear whoa, I'm here, let's go. Whoa, oi, oi, urgent, urgent. Yeah, yeah, love that. Uh, Bishop Grisby, what are your yeah, thoughts? Yeah, awesome, awesome word there, Elder Randolph. When I hear the word war, whoa, I'm thinking of a, st uh, a stern warning. It's a warning it's, that disaster is going to approach. And uh, anytime we get a warning from God, we need to pay close attention to it. Mm -hmm. We think that, think, you know, we think we're thankful that our God will warn us. We're thankful that our God will, yeah. you know, uh, give us another chance. He'll give us a second, sometime third and fourth chance. But yes. getting a warning from God is a blessing because he mm -hmm. God lets us know that he loves us and he's concerned about us. But when we hear a war, a woe, we, we're thinking of a stern warning that something is going to happen. If you don't change something, something is going negative. A, a disaster is going to come. Wow. You know what? That, and that wasn't a tongue twister, um, Elder Grisby. That was a, he just spoke out of you in twos, the word war um, and woe, which is very powerful. You know what I'm saying? 
um, you know, like verily, verily, truly, truly. So it's a confirmation. I believe the spirit is speaking out for tonight that there's a warring taking place. There's a warring in the heavenlies for, for mankind. There's a warring in our soul, you know what I'm saying? Between the spirit and the flesh, there's a warring in the church right now for us to be unified. There's a warring taking place. And so, as you said that, I just sensed that in the spirit that mm -hmm. it, it's, it's war, it's woe, but it's war, it's war. You know, and to heed the woe, there will be warfare. Um, because if you're going to heed the woe, you still have to fight back from your previous decisions. You have to fight back from your previous mindset. You have to fight back. You know, so there's a there's a definitely a tug right now taking place, and a sense. Praise the Lord, Sister Levita. Um, praise the Lord, Sister uh, 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 D. Um, D. McCoy. Um, praise the Lord, Jackie. Jackie said, woe is you better wake up and pay attention. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Yes. And pay attention. It's, it's yes. running into to your child's room. Hurry up. You're late for school. Mm -hmm. Hurry up. There's an earthquake. Hurry up. The storm is coming. Hurry up. Pack up everything and go. Yes. It, it's, it's, it's that urgency. And I heard you say that, Elder Randolph. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip my screen over and um, see, can we uh, go through this lesson? I'll, I'll go through the previous slides very quickly, and then we'll get to today's lesson. People of God, remember um, that in this uh, lesson format, it's important that you are sharing out. By the way, some of you guys haven't liked and shared. Um, and so uh, Sister Flo is, is uh, Facebook called her top, top fan number one. Uh, yep, and Sister Andrine, uh oh, she didn't like and share. Oh boy, oh boy. You know, Pastor, can I ask you? Can I ask you something right quick as you turn? Yes, you can. Head? Uh, when we look at woe and a stern, a stern, a stern warning, uh, an urgency that's been mentioned, are we in a time now of woe with the things that are going on in our country, the things mm -hmm. that we have, that are going on with the pandemic that is going on? Uh, can we take this now as a as a wool? Yes, yes. If you remember yesterday, um, you might have come on late. I know your flight was late, <laughs> but that's exactly what I was saying. The spirit has spoken to me just saying that this is the season of the woe. Okay. And this is the reason why he had us kind of focus just in on Isaiah, who the Lord spoke through and gave the warnings through him in the same consistent way. Right. So you have 20 woes in Isaiah and we have 18 of them that we're working with through this uh, lesson two part right now, maybe a three part. But yes, this you're absolutely right. What, what you're sensing in the spirit is absolutely right. It's the season of woe. And 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 so the waters get muddy when you're in a season of woe because you have to hear God's voice and separate all the other noise. Mm -hmm. And what's happening um, to the people of God because they're walking in carnality, what happens is instead of signs following you, you start following signs. Mm. So then the children of God are looking with their naked eye at all the signs. They're, they're, they're trying to see a sign. Oh, maybe that means that. Maybe that means that. Not understanding that the church of the living God, signs follow the believer. Believers don't follow signs. Right. Hallelujah. You know, and so as we walk in the Holy Ghost, he then begins to, to push out the Amos 3 a promise unto us that he'll do nothing without first revealing it to his prophets, prophets the sons of God. He will give us that access, mm -hmm. but we are not asking for it. So we got woe, and we started with Proverbs uh, 22 and 28. I'm just moving right through here, children of God. But that pointed out the ancient landmarks, mm -hmm. the ancient landmarks that the fathers have set. We're in trouble if they start getting moved. I also gave you the definition that the Lord had given me. Whoa, a pronouncement. It, well, it's pronounced oi. It's a cry, wailing, lamentation, deep rooted in pain, a warning, and of a spiritual and natural, spiritual and natural consequences now and to come. I gave you the Arabic and Persian use for it. Mm -hmm. Then we move to Isaiah 3 and 9. And the commentary was the Lord was dealing with a smirk 
of the smirk of the reprobate. For those of you who don't know what the what the reprobate is, uh, the, the reprobate is somebody that can't repent, somebody that can't change their mind. The Lord has removed his grace from them. And it's a smirk, it's a haughtiness about it. And then the casting of eyes of the guilty. Then we went to Isaiah 3 and 11. And the commentary was the delusion that present uh, that presents itself as success and acceptable will be greater than the punishment later, which the Lord was just pointing out that the delusion is real big and it clouds people's judgment from seeing that there's going to be punishment later. You got to be able to have delayed gratification. You want a reward now? Well, you can get it in the flesh now, but that means you'll have something else later on. Then he moved us to Isaiah 5 and 11, which dealt with addictions. Mm -hmm. And the commentary was that, and this is where the Lord says, woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that follow after strong drink, that continue into night, till wine inflame them. Well, we don't even, almost don't even hear that in the church any, anymore, you know, because um, we have, and by the way, I participated in that culture. Um, I'm gonna start hitting that culture back. I'm ashamed, I've already repented. Uh, and it's really not since I've been in Fresno, but as a younger minister, you know, I participated in the in the um, in the uh, preacher movement that was trying to be so progressive. We were being so progressive that we missed God, mm. and we were actually pushing up against everything that the Lord had established. Mm. In our attempt to become more relevant, we became ir irrelevant to heaven. Mm. So you don't even hear anything about. Um, alcohol, don't even hear anything about drink and stuff like that. And Christians say, oh no, I do this, blah, blah, blah. And so we just kind of minimize it down. And now, by the way, Christians don't want to hear anything but racism. Hmm. That's, that's the big sin. But of course, you're not going to find that in scripture because race is a made up term right. just 600 years ago. Mm -hmm. So it's a delusion. So now the devil has us fighting a delusion that should never have existed. So now we got to fight with people's mind to get them to see that this should have never been released into the earth realm at all because it was demonic. It's not, it's not even real. Anyway, um, addiction. Um, let, me, let me clarify that. So I just want you to be clear. The fact that you experience a discrimination about your quote unquote race that's real, but race itself as a concept is not real. It's something that we have made real to us. But heaven doesn't, listen, heaven didn't even see a difference between Adam and Eve. No. Heaven looked at both of them and called both of their name Adam. Anyway, let me move on. Addictions from grief, curiosity, and celebration lead to a delusion from normative sanctioned struggle. In other words, there's going to be struggle, but if you start reaching out for the bottle, reaching out for addiction, that will become the new struggle. The struggle that God puts in every one of our lives, that he allows in every one of our lives, it leads us to the better us. Struggle makes you strong. Then we move to Isaiah 5 8. They join house to house. This dealt with the wealthy and powerful. People who are, you know, it's all about the Benjamins. There used to be a song P. Diddy put it out. Puff Daddy, it's all about the Benjamins, baby. I remember singing that. That's right, it's about the Benjamins. Well, guess what? Turns out it's not. Turns out it's about God's will in your life. And then we went to Isaiah 5, 18. Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity. And the commentary was a culture that indulges in self-flattery becomes a cocoon icon unto itself without the ability to recognize its sin and thus not recognizing its own demise. So because we are the flattery culture, by the way, you can't criticize nobody. Can't give anybody a critique. No. And so that's why the quality of things is not what it should be. Mm. Quality of people is not what it should be because you can't give a critique. Can't say, uh-uh, that, that was the wrong note. Can't say, uh-uh, that don't match. Can't say, uh-uh, that's out of place. Mm -hmm. You judging me. And now, what do they say? You racist. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't like that article. I disagree with that article. Well, you must be racist. And now, 
And and now some of those those people, they say that to the black people. You must be an Uncle Tom. Right. Right. Because I disagree with you. Right. Mm -hmm. People cannot handle any criticism, cannot handle any critique. Can't be told that you're wrong. No. So what we do is we just say, you're right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And you're on your way to hell. It's all right. Just try your best. Ain't nobody perfect. We all struggling. So, so when you talk like that and don't realize that there's a standard of God, we in trouble. Every pastor, everybody has a truth. Every, oh, everybody has a truth. You, oh, that's so, so right. This is my truth. Well, guess what? I'm going to tell you my truth. Yeah. But guess what? There's another truth. It's called God's truth. Yes. <laughs> you know, this is my experience. All right, your experience. Well, you know, anyway, uh, Isaiah 520. It says, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. They put darkness for light and light for darkness and put bitter for sweet, sweet for bitter. Mm -hmm. What begins as a lie for social, for familial, and political gain becomes one's true appetite. That was powerful. Mm. That was powerful. Uh, yeah. Yes, it and was. it becomes your bondage. Here's the last one, I believe, or one of the last ones. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Mm -hmm. And what the Holy Spirit gave me to tell you was after I train other eyes to see as I see, there will be no one who will detect that my eyes are actually infected. Mm. If your doctor's eyes are infected, when he's inspecting your eyes, he won't see infection because right, yeah. he has infection. I wonder, do the people understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. See, we used to be in a society where there was debate. When I was at the University of Washington, Elder Grisby, mm -hmm. you go out to the courtyard. They had a big courtyard there with a little stage. And so you'd have somebody get up. Allah is God. Well, we as the apostolics went up there and said, no, Allah, that's a demon. <laughs> he ain't God. Who are you, brother, to tell me? You serving the white God. No, we don't serve that white God. We serve Yahweh. The supreme God, the supreme ruler, the God whose name they wouldn't even pronounce, couldn't even put vowels in the name so they wouldn't even say it in the ancient of days. The God that was acknowledged by Babylon, by Assyria, by the Egyptians, mm -hmm. that God, that's who we serve, the one true God. Then you get somebody up there, God is three. No, God is one. Come on with it. So we would have debate, and what it did was, it would sharpen me up. I remember, I remember one time I got whooped up by a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> Jehovah's Witness sent me packing. I was so mad I couldn't even say nothing else. I just, you wrong, you wrong. But I, I didn't have no scripture, so I had to go back and then show back up. There used to be a time where there was that debate. Now, nobody wants the debate of it. No. They want to cancel you. All right, so now we're here to today's lesson. So to the people of God, my question to you is, what happens when God's emotion becomes your emotion? Mm. What happens when God's emotion becomes your emotion? And while you guys answer that, we're going to look at the scripture. It's Isaiah 6 and 5. Mm -hmm. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Elders, um, let's start with uh, Elder Grisby. Talk to me. What are your thoughts about this? Yeah, Pastor. In this situation, Isaiah had seen the Lord high and lifted up. <laughs> And anytime you come unto the Lord, it causes you to look at yourself. It causes you to look at yourself in your undone condition. Even when we go in prayer, we ought to be taking a quick inventory of our lives yes. because we're going before a holy God, a God who is omniscient, a 
a God who knows everything about us, knows everything about everything. Uh, one who even knows what we're coming for. He knows why, what we're going to pray even before we pray. He knows our whole life. There's nothing that's ever been done that he does not know. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in the future that's going to happen that he does not know. Mm -hmm. So we must recognize and realize who he is and look at ourselves and who we're coming before, uh, mm -hmm. taking that quick inventory of our lives. Oh, I believe this is what happened to Isaiah. When he saw him, he said, whoa, woe is me. I, I'm not even worthy to come before him. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought I was cool. <laughs> I thought I was all right. Come on, we was when we were in the world. We thought we were, we thought we was okay until we come and we got to start measuring ourselves against the word of God. Yeah. Seeing how we lined up. You know, I, you know, I thought I was a good person. I thought I was cool. I thought everything uh -huh. was all right until I got in church and I began to read God's word and I began to come before the Lord. Then I said, "Whoa, I'm in un, I, you know, I was in an undone condition." Come on with it. Come yeah. on. Elder Randolph, Randolph, what are your thoughts? Yeah, Elder, yeah, Elder Green, that, that's big. You use that word inventory. That, that's a, that's a, that really is a big word. Um, I, Isaiah saw enough of God to do a self-inventory. Yeah. Isn't that something? And, and, everybody, and everybody, even though they come in contact with God, some refuse to do that self-inventory. Inventory. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the killing part about it is, if you don't do it, he's going to do the inventory anyway. Yes, so yes. Either way, you're going to have to face, at, yeah. at some point, you either face it now or you face it later. But you're going to have to face that inventory. Yeah, you know what? I love what you're saying, uh, bishops, because um, I'm looking at Sister D. McCoy. Um, says seeing the vision of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then Michelle Peters said, it's about being undone when you have the same emotion of God. Terry uh, Brown says, seeing the word for what it is. You begin to see the wor word and the world. He wanted to say world, sorry about that. Seeing the world for what it really is, right? Mm -hmm. um, when the emotions of God, it becomes your feelings. Um, you become zealous for his word. Uh, something else that Terry Brown said. So. What, what's what's a, a, a trigger here is that Isaiah, when he sees the Lord in his glory, he has to make a shift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, would, I would say that the Lord has given us grace by exposing us to his radiance. Yes. Because you, you can be exposed to God, but not exposed to his radiance not exposed to his majesty because it's impossible for you to be in that presence and not change. Mm -hmm. You, anybody walking away say, oh, I saw God and, and it's all right. You couldn't have seen God. <laughs> you, you follow what I'm saying? You, you, couldn't, you couldn't have seen God, mm -hmm. which means that the Lord is showing his radiance to some and because of unbelief, on the back, holding some back from others. That's why in Corinthians it says, whom the God of this world has blinded their eyes because of their unbelief. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is the commentary that I want the people of God to respond to. This is what the Lord gave me. When God's woe becomes our woe, mm. the fruit of mm -hmm. confession and repentance blooms. Yes. yes. The blooming of this fruit leads to the sanctification process, which allows us to hear and fulfill the call of God in our lives. Mm -hmm. Once again, when God's woe becomes our woe, the fruit of confession and repentance blooms. The blooming of this fruit leads to sanctification process, which allows us to hear and fulfill the call of God on our lives. To the people out there in a Facebook land. What did, what did the spirit mean when he stated that when God's woe becomes our woe, that the fruit of confession and repentance blooms? Elders, what are your thoughts about that statement? Sorry about that. I took it off the screen. 
but it leads to sanctification. Maybe we should just talk about sanctification. What you know, what we're talking about. Because remember, Isaiah, after this, they took the hot coal, right? Mm -hmm. And touched his lips. Right. Now, some commentators believe that this experience he had was actually a flashback to his calling. I don't believe it is. Mm. I believe it's in sequence to the order of the prophecies that he was given. I believe the Lord was taking him higher mm -hmm. in this moment. Mm -hmm. So there is a moment where God can use you to deliver for another, but now when he wants to take you to another place, yes. he has to sanctify you again. Mm -hmm. Elders, what are your responses to the, the idea of the sanctification process? There, there can be no real sanctification without repentance. Got it. Can, mm -hmm. Cannot, cannot be. With, without, <laughs> because sanctification really is the Lord setting you apart for service. And how can you possibly serve the way God wants you to serve until you make that make that about face till you turn from your ways to God's ways. How can you possibly be set apart without doing that? You're still stuck on self. You still, there's still something in you that want that wants to do your own thing. Yes. Yes. Elder Grisby. Yes, excellent, excellent, Elder Randolph. You know, repentance is turning away from our own way of thinking and mm -hmm. turning to God. Repent repentance is a type of death, death to the things that I was doing before, death to the nightclubs, death to uh, whatever I was doing, T death to fornication. It's mm -hmm. that serious, it's that powerful, and you're turning to God uh, with godly sorrow. And uh, at that point, uh, I agree with you, Elder Randall. That's the time when God can really, really use us. Mm -hmm. We cannot, uh, you know, be really be used with God by God with sin on us, with anything in our lives. That's because uh, uh, God cannot stand not one iota of sin. He cannot stand sin, uh, not anything, not little sin, and definitely not big sin. But He cannot stand sin. So when we're going to be used by Him, we have to go through uh, repentance. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, against godly sorrow and uh, turning away from what we were doing before mm -hmm. and confessing our sins is, uh, you know, also a part of that too. Confessing unto him yes. and being honest with him, uh, uh, not trying to high hold anything back. Uh, what was that song that came out not long ago? Withholding nothing. Yeah, withholding not nothing. Withholding nothing. Coming before yeah. him, you know, with your whole heart in hand serving him with a, with a mindset to, re, to serve him with your whole heart. Because he's withholding nothing. He's yeah. not holding anything back. Yeah. And, and when you guys were talking about sanctification, these great points, guys, when you talk about sanctification set apart for service, you know, um, we did some fixing up with uh, one of our, ba our, our bathtub and, and shower and stuff. And it looks beautiful. Like you're right, we needed mortar, you quick set, you had to put the towel up, right? And you, you get it all stacked up. So so the big is the towel. Oh, the, the towel, you want to make sure you got the right towel. Uh oh, gotta have a tub, gotta have this. All of these big parts and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, the thing that keeps the knob to be able to turn on the shower on this particular thing, it was an itty bitty Allen's wrench. Mm. Tiny little Allen's wrench that was set aside and the handle kept coming off. I'm like, oh boy. But that little Allen's wrench was set aside. Mm -hmm. yeah. Seemed like it was useless for all of the renovation. Mm -hmm. But in order to do that last touch, you needed that Allen's wrench. Sometimes people feel as though they've been set aside to be, to be forgotten. Mm -hmm. I want you to know, no, God, when he sanctifies you, he sets you aside for a purpose. Yeah. 
Yes. Yes. And although people may not acknowledge it, God will elevate you at the right time. You ain't got to do nothing to get there you know, right. other than stay in his will. You ain't got to be nasty. You ain't got to be cutthroat. You ain't got to push nobody out of line. All you got to do is wait right there and you'll become that Allen's wrench yes. that holds it all together. Yes. Yes. So let's look at let's look at the next the well, next wrench. Go ahead. Can I say one thing? Yes, sir. All the time. And I, I think you're one of the you're the first person that I heard say that when you said I, I heard you, I think you you pray this prayer. You said, Lord, help me to love the things that you love. Mm-hmm. Help me to hate the things that you hate. Yeah. And when we look at God's woe becoming our woe of confession, you know, that means we're uh, uh, we're wanting to love the things that God loves. We want to regard the things as evil that God recall, regards as evil. We mm-hmm. want to hate the things that God hates. We, we're talking about making a change. We're answering uh, that stern warning to change our lives and and, and confess our sins and uh, and repent and and live a, a, a sanctified life. Yeah, you know what I I, I, pre- I appreciate you for pushing that out. In fact, everybody that's watching that, please type that in. Lord, help me to love what you love. Yes, yes. Help me to hate what you hate. Type that in, please. Am I say this, Pastor? And then like and share. Go ahead, uh, yeah, Pastor. Yeah. And when when you and, and might I say when you pray that prayer. You have to be ready because to be able to feel one iota of the emotion of God is overwhelming. Yes. He has to give you the capacity for that. As you, as we are in our present state, you're not ready. He has to give you that capacity to feel that. See, I'm Hallelujah. telling you, I mean, I, I should say the capacity to handle it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because it can be overwhelming. Yeah, and I love the I love the way you're pointing that out because listen, the word of God, y'all ready for this? This is deep. This is deep, what I'm about to say. The word of God is the word of God. It's not the word of man. Right. It's not the word of Tobias. Right? It's not the word of Elder Grisby. It's not the word of Elder Randolph. It's the word of God. It's yeah. God's spoken word. Yes. Yeah. It's God's rhema that became Logos. So that's one stage of understanding. But when you elevate in your relationship, all of a sudden, his word begins to impact you spiritually, emotionally, holistically, to where you're tied to it. So, so, you know, because, listen, some of you might have had a parent that has some rules and you are embarrassed of the rules. You invite your friend over and your friend said, wait, we can't, like in, our, in my house, you couldn't sit on the bed. My grandmother didn't allow it. You had to sit in the chair. Wasn't no sitting on the bed. Right. So, you know, I bring a friend over. I said, oh, no, no, man, don't uh, just sit in the chair. Well, man, why, are you, why, why can't you sit in the bed? I would apologize for my grandmother. I said, man, she... You know, she kind of be tripping, dude. So just just sit in the chair, man. She she don't allow us to sit on the bed. Sometimes Christians are like apologizing for God. Mm. We say, well, well, you know, I know, I know. But, you know, the Bible, Bible say, you know, mm. we kind of shouldn't do that. You know, so I know you want to do that, but, you know, man, you know, you're going to get in trouble. We kind of preach like that, which, which, which means we're like, don't blame me, blame him. <laughs> he once said it, right? Yeah. So even in that, we have to pray, Lord, help me to love what you love and hate what you hate. Mm-hmm. I want to have your emotion about it because the reason why we don't take a staunch stance on certain things is because we don't have the emotion of God about it. Yes. By the way, that's one of the things, and I ain't, ain't no need to get all into it, but one of the things I'm grieved with, with, with a whole lot of preachers and stuff like that in, in our circles, is because it turns out they ain't as grieved about some stuff mm. that our forefathers used to be grieved with. Mm. And that we've been kind of faking. We've been just preaching it 
but we actually don't even believe it. Well, if we don't believe it, then why are we preaching it? Right. And by the way, I can argue my own point and say, well, guess what? You've been called to preach, so preach the word of God. That's good. That's minimally meet standards. If you want to minimally meet standards, just it's his word. My job is to give it to you. That's it. But if you want to elevate up and truly have a Moses relationship with God, truly have a Joshua relationship with God, a Joseph relationship with God, an Ezekiel relationship with God, an Isaiah relationship with God, and a Samuel relationship with God, a John relationship with God, a Paul relationship with God. If you want to get there, you have to say, Lord, help me to love what you love and hate what you hate. Yes. Let me get to, to this next piece. All right. So now, point number two in today's lesson. I'm praying that everyone is being blessed. Isaiah 10.1. Come on, type it in. Isaiah 10.1. 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 Come on, do it 200 times. Isaiah 10.1. So that people who watch this, they'll know, go to Isaiah 10.1. Because when you look for justice, here is God letting you know that justice has always been something he cared about. Equity. Justice. The Lord wanted it among the people of God. Woe unto them that decree an unrighteous decree. Mm -hmm. Wow. Hallelujah. Now, now you all understand why the Holy Spirit had me so on fire when they first talked about shutting down the churches. When they first started, some people say, well, that was his order. Just because it's his order don't mean that it's not an unrighteous decree. Right, right. See, some people, and then started pushing out, well, you got to obey them to have the rule under you. Well, that was spiritual leadership. Mm -hmm. Well, it does say pray for your government of the laws of the land. Yes, it does. But that doesn't mean the Lord won't judge it. Right. Woe unto them that decree an unrighteous decree. In other words, it has not been vetted by heaven. Mm-hmm. And that right grievousness which they have prescribed. So this is what the Holy Spirit spoke out of me. The righteous judge will judge the laws, policy, and directives of evil men. Mm -hmm. God cares about justice and equity and the pain of those impacted will be the source of wrath on those who support such decrees. Mm -hmm. You got to be careful what you co-sign on to. Oh, man, right. Yeah. Did y'all catch that? Mm -hmm. See, just, just because we live in peace with all men and follow holiness does not mean we have to co-sign. Right. You don't co-sign on an unholy decree. You don't co-sign on something that was written grievous, right and grievousness being prescribed. Mm -hmm. So now, so watch this now. A lot of people don't even realize that slavery is not even a part of the Constitution. No. And I'm talking about the original signed document right. ratified, I believe it's 1781. Now, What's interesting, though, is that the Declaration of Independence, which was not done with Black people in mind, it was given with the new settlers in mind against Britain. Mm -hmm. Now the Lord has that be used in 1861. Mm -hmm. And now you have an Emancipation Proclamation, right? Uh -huh. And you have a righteous decree being made. Do y'all see that? Uh -huh. It's a righteous decree being made. It's so righteous that it caused our whole country to go into a war between the Union and the Confederates or those that succeeded from the Union. Uh -huh. 
and hundreds of thousands of people were killed because of a righteous decree. Mm -hmm. To fulfill the righteous decree. That's how serious the Lord is about his righteous decree. Yes. Mm -hmm. On the flip side, an unrighteous decree can also cause lives to lose, but for naught. Yes. So you had Jim Crow laws, which were unrighteous decrees. Are y'all following me? Since, since everybody want to be woke, right? So I'm going to wake you up then. <laughs> oh, whoa. Everybody want Black Lives to Matter. Here we go. So there's a difference between a righteous decree and an unrighteous decree. Yes. A decree made that's selfish, a decree that's made to diminish, to hurt the poor, to disenfranchise people, it's unrighteous. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have wanted that. Mm -hmm. So notice now, though, the pain of that, this is what the Spirit spoke out of me, the pain of that unrighteous decree will be the source of wrath on those who support such decrees. Mm -hmm. So now, if you want something to change, you got to change the decree. Not the cry. See, it's not even in the protest. It's not even in the demonstration. You got to look at the law, the policies, and the directives that are given. Mm -hmm. People of God, if you want things to change, what we have to be fighting for in the earth realm is for righteous policies, righteous directives, righteous laws. Mm -hmm. The Lord will honor a nation that seeks for equity, justice, and righteous decrees. Yes. That's when we say, Lord, tell us what to do. Mm. Some people are going, you know, they, they just want whatever their particular group wants. Mm. But sometimes what your group wants is not righteous to everyone else. Right. right. It has to be a righteous decree. My yeah. God. My yeah. God. You know, I, I'll, I'll let you guys respond to that because we got to move on. Um, in fact, let me ask the people this. Can you jot down a law that you believe is an unrighteous decree and write down a law? I'm talking about a, a literal law of the land that is a righteous decree. It's going to get hot if you write it. Go ahead, put it in. Elders, what are your thoughts? Um, as you were speaking, Pastor, I thought about the decree that the governor made, shut down everything again. If he would have put a, and I was thinking on this earlier today, I think I was telling my wife about it. If he would have put a, just one little tweak in there, he could have shut down everything, but he said, I want to leave the places of worship open. Yes. God's help. You know, if he would have did that in his decree, that would have been awesome. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I've even felt like writing him and say, governor, open the churches back up. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, you, yes. I don't care if you close down the bars and the nightclubs and all that, but if you'd have left the churches open, mm -hmm. I feel that God would have blessed our state even more. But uh, the thing that gets me about that, Pastor, also is woe to them that make the decree. Yes. I, when I looked at that, I, be, I wrote, looked up the word decree, and it yes. is an official order. That's right. By a legal authority. That's right. And though, it, made me, it makes you shudder to hear so many people making decrees. I decree and declare. Yes. I declare yes. that. Yes. I decree and declare this. Yes. Woo. We got to <laughs> know what we're doing there. Come on. We got to know what we're releasing. Yes. Do you have the authority yeah, it's, it's, to release that? Yeah, it's an official order. You got to make sure that that decree comes from God. Come you got to make sure that that comes from God. Glory. Hallelujah. And even when you make it, you better shudder. Hallelujah. Absolutely. The things that I know that the Lord has told me, I shudder. I shudder about even saying it. Yes. I know the, the gravity of who gave it to me. Yes. I can't say any old kind of thing. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. And I think about who he is. He's the creator of all things. And Glory. he's the one that gave me this decree and told me what to say. He yes. thought it up for me to use me. I'm going to speak something that I'm just thinking about. Uh-uh. No, yeah. no. We got to be careful about that kind of stuff. 
That's right. That's right. And it's a it's a reverence that comes with that. I, I love that you brought out the idea of the tweak because that was in my mind in the spirit. Is that it's really the mentality and the attitude by which our leaders are doing things. Mm -hmm. That's what God is going to frown on mm -hmm. because it's possible for a decree to be righteous, but it be unrighteous when you don't have the emotion and the countenance of God yes. when it's declared. Yes. For instance, the disciples got mad at the Samaritans when the Samaritans wanted Jesus to stay. And they said, Lord, would you like us to call down fire from heaven on them? Yeah. And the Lord said, you don't know by what spirit you speak that. Yes. The, the decree could have been made, but the attitude and the mentality behind it was not of God. Right. Yes. The, 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 the soothsaying little girl in Acts mm -hmm. says, these are the men of God that show you the way. The decree was correct, but it was in the wrong spirit. Yes. What I've been challenging, and I want all of you who I lead to understand, I've been challenging the spirit behind the decree that makes it unrighteous. It is not unrighteous to say, I want to keep people safe. It is not unrighteous to say, I don't want people to die from COVID-19. It is not unrighteous to say, we're going to have to move some things around given how this plague is operating. That's not unrighteous. I think some people have misunderstood me. No, no. It's not unrighteous to say wear a mask. It's not unrighteous. No. What's unrighteous is the mentality behind it. And the thought, because I know what the enemy's thought is, I'm going to shut y'all down and you guys are going to forget the God of your salvation. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so it's important. I think, I thank God that you brought that out and I see some people. Oh, wait a minute. Let me check out what they're talking about. Oh, yeah. Oh, they didn't want to meet. They, oh, yeah. They, some of them didn't want to, they didn't want to touch that. Let's move on. They didn't want to touch that one. They didn't want to touch that. Let's move on to the next one. To God be the glory. Isaiah 17 and 12. I pray that everyone is being blessed by this lesson. Woe unto the multitude of many people which make a noise like the noise of the seas and to the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. For those of you, I, I, we'll go to, to the next one in a moment, but what he was describing was literally the Assyrians that he was going to give authority at some point to come in and to basically spank the children of God. But you got to be careful even when you're the one that God is allowing to help the children of God come to a place of repentance. So in the commentary, it says God will judge all nations that come against his children. Mm -hmm. I want you all to hear that. God will judge all nations that come against his children. Uh -huh. Yes, in places of Asia where they won't allow for Christians to worship and they got to go on under what? Guess what? God is going to judge that. Yes. In places even in North Europe, Russia, you want to call, mm -hmm. where Christians are trying to worship, but they can't speak openly, God will judge that nation. Some of the calamity you see with all of these nations, and by the way, we're crazy enough to keep sending money all over the place, yeah. all these places. Some of them are up under the judgment of God because of how they've treated God's children. Mm -hmm. And you think America is in trouble. What do you think America would look like without the children of God being in America? Mm -hmm. God will judge all nations that come against his children, even those whom he uses to punish his children. The arrogance of that nation will be checked by God. Yes. Glory be to God. Uh, Let me, if, if somebody got something to say about it, go ahead. But I'm going to move to Isaiah 18.1. Because this one is unique. Woe to the land shadowing with wings, dealing with the rivers which is beyond the river of Ethiopia. You'll like that. 
the Lord positioned Judah between Assyria and the great empire, Ethiopia. Ethiopia was a huge empire at this time, 700 BC, right? You guys said Black Lives Matter, right? Ethiopia was rolling during this time. Ethiopia had taken over Egypt and was sitting in a place of prominence. Mm -hmm. And the Lord was beckoning his children that, listen, Judah, there is an alliance that may need to take place with Ethiopia because of the Assyrians, because they were stuck right in the middle. So it says, the Lord positioned Judah between Assyria and the great empire, Ethiopia, which was a holy standing with God. By the way, Ethiopia still has blessing with God. Remember the Ethiopian eunuch. Yeah, we yeah. believe that the that the true shroud of uh, 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 Torah and also for the Ark of the Covenant, we believe that that is sitting safe in Ethiopia. I should say many of us believe. You must be aligned with the righteous sanction by God. To align with the wicked will open you up to the death blow that was not originally designed for you. Mm -hmm. oh, I want the children of God to respond to that Facebook. Yeah. Unholy alignment, unholy allegiances. What's the danger of having unholy allegiances in your friendships, in your family patterns, in your business decisions? What happens when you open yourself up to unholy alliances? Elders, I'll let you all respond. God is judging evil. Wow. And he's judging everything attached to that evil. Well, let me say it, let me, let me say it this way. Love that. The Lord's target is sin. Yes. He's looking to eradicate sin. Wherever sin is, that's where that's where the death blow is headed. And if sin happens to be on you, then guess what? You 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 catch that blow. So the people of God have to be careful who you align yourself with. Whether Man. whether it's through your friendships, sometimes even relatives, and be careful what you do politically. Wow. Be careful. Be yeah. careful. I love this, Elder Elder uh, Randolph. Um, the, the people are still talking about unholy decrees on Facebook. You can look kind of look down on it. And they're declaring everything from uh, the releasing of inmates that have heinous crimes that are now mm -hmm. plaguing the cities mm -hmm. uh, and stuff like that and not being more thoughtful, you know, in the way they're picking and choosing that. It's just, just release just release them. It's like, well, wait a minute. There's some that may need to be released, but some not need to be released. But, you know, what, what kind of what, what kind of order are you going in? Somebody else uh, put on there uh, about the shutting down of churches, and I know that the little sisters of the poor, um, the uh, the nuns, they just won a court case yeah. Uh, yeah. to the Supreme Court where they were going to try to make them give contraception right. uh, right. and and have right. them do right. abortion referrals. What kind of unholy decree is that? <laughs> really? You gonna make me kill the baby? You gonna make me kill the baby? You so I can't say, well, I don't do that service. Like you know, my my wife, her practice, she a Christian therapist. She should have the right to say, mm, no, that's not anything we specialize in. You gonna make me specialize in it? Right. That's an unholy decree. So I'm seeing some people. Oh, uh, Terry Brown is saying, if we associate with evil, you will carry the same judgment, political, personal, um, and beliefs. Absolutely. And therefore, that same judgment. Birds of a feather flock together. Yeah. They also get shot together. <laughs> sure do. Sure do. You know? yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, Sister D said, you are prone to the judgment of God and attacked by the enemy. Sometimes you just got to slide to the left. And, 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 it, and things are so wacky, Pastor. And I and I, I, I I've always said this since all this has began. Um, as you know, I'm 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 around the city of Fresno on a daily basis, and <laughs> they shut churches down, but they haven't shut the prostitutes down. Prostitutes are still walking the streets of Fresno, California, and I'm like, 
you know what I'm like, really? Oh, and by the way, they're wearing masks now. I'm sure that's pretty reassuring, you know. But <laughs> but but come on, how how twisted, how twisted can society be? <laughs> well, yeah. They, <laughs> <laughs> Apostle, you you know you always bringing something out. Okay, so so yeah, I because I I have a picture in my hand now about the prostitute with the mask over her yeah. face. Yeah, yeah, it's like great. But, but here here here's something else though. Just to get into the weeds of this, another unholy decree is to punish the prostitute with years in prison and let the pimp out in one day because most of these babies that are out there are sex trafficked and being abused so they're actually a victim mm -hmm. yeah and the victimizer gets to go all free it's unholy so decree so see that's what that's, that's where our idea yeah, that's where our decrees i'm so glad we're maybe we should do a whole series on this but i wanted to bring to the well the holy spirit wanted to bring to the people of god that the lord is concerned about laws Mm -hmm. Sometimes in church, we say, oh, separation of church and state. By the way, that's not even what that means. Oh. Separation of church and state is oh. to say, state, stay out of the church's business. Yes. Because the country was founded upon the idea that church would be a part of the foundation of who we would be. Even when the people originally that was practicing then did not all practice it with perfect Christianity. Right. That's how blessed we are in this nation. Come on, we got to move on to the next one. The people are chatting; they having a good time. I wanted to. Yeah. Can I say this is something on that, Pastor? Yes, you can. Um, we got to watch who we align ourselves with, and make sure that we are on the Lord's side. Wow. What that I wanted to say on that. Uh, yes. You know, we we have to make sure that we're on the Lord's side, and we mentioned it earlier how even. When the, the ones that God used to punish Israel, he even he came back and got them too, mm -hmm. didn't he? Everyone that he used, every nation that he used to punish Israel, he came back and got them, yeah, even though sure he did. used them to do it. Nineveh? <laughs> no, yeah. no, no way. He got them. He not, not, elder, 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 not just the ones that he used to punish them, he came back and got Ephraim. Uh huh. Didn't jump in. Yeah. He said, "That's your brother. You when you saw Israel sure. getting beat up, you laughed about it." Yeah. Yeah. So God also will come back and get the mockers of the saints of God. And it made me think about Pastor how that you know in that previous the previous scripture uh, how that heaven, hell has been designed for Satan and his cohorts. Come on with it. Yeah. But if we side with him, we'll go to hell too. Yeah. 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 So your, your, your alignment, who you line yourself up with, is very important. And this is why we, and Bishop used to say something. I want to say this. I was thinking about it earlier today. I often think a lot about a lot of things that Bishop said. He said, sometimes you can get, he said, some of y'all are getting too close to people. He said, some of y'all are so close that if you take the medicine, it's going to work you. <laughs> no, if your brain <laughs> take the medicine, it's going to work you. <laughs> That's too close. That's too you, close. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you know, uh, watch who you align yourself with, who, and be on the Lord's side. Make sure that your relationship with God is right. And let, let me paramount. Let your relationship with Him be paramount. That's the paramount relationship, right? I, I, I love, I, lo I love that. I love that because it's about, it's all about us. And this is what I believe the Spirit wanted to do through me, and that is free the people of God up from this bewitched state that many of them are in. And, I, and that's why I've been, trying to, I've been trying to send these Facebook messages out to people to kind of disconnect them from group um, crowd thought. Because mm. I see them just going with the crowd. No, 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 no. Look at Isaiah 28 and 1. Woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower, which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. Now, he's, he's talking about the celebration and the fading away 
that was taking place. It's a fading, it, it's, it's slowly but surely. Like right now, I'm trying to bring one of my trees back to life. Mm. And, I, and, and, and I, I couldn't tell, the, the, the leaves was all brown and stuff like that. But now it's in that middle stage where if you would look at it, you can't tell whether it's dying or if it's coming back to life. Mm. Some people can't tell whether they're dying or they're coming back to life. Mm. So he's saying that the, that, that the beauty was fading as a flower. So I have some statistics about alcoholism disorder. It says 86.3%, this is in 2018, percent of people ages 18 or older reported that they drank alcohol at some point in their lifetime. 70% reported that they drank in the past year. 55.3% reported that they drank in the past month. Then it goes down to, uh, to talk about youth ages 12 to 17, 401,000 adolescents ages 12 to 17 had an, they're calling it an AUD. What is AUD? Alcohol use disorder. Mm. Alcohol use disorder. That's a whole lot of young people. The number includes 173 males, 173,000 males 227,000 females. Mm. You mean to tell me that young girls are drinking more than boys? Wow. So the boy is sitting up there, hey girl, he take an itty bitty wig and give her the whole bottle. Wow. I just finished talking to my daughter kind of about that. Anyway, alcohol related deaths. An estimated 88,000 people, approximately 62,000 men, 26,000 women die from alcohol-related causes annually. Mm. Now, we have 130,000 that have died so far from coronavirus-related injury. 88,000 people annually die from alcohol-related causes. Wow. Come on, Facebook, talk back to me. Tell me what your thoughts are about this. It says in 2010, alcohol misuse cost the United States $249 billion. Wow. wow. Then it says global burden. It says in 2012, 3.3 million deaths around the world. Family consequences. More than 10% of US children live with a parent with alcohol problems. And it goes, uh oh, prevalence of binge drinking, prevalence of heavy alcohol use. Okay, with the heavy alcohol use, men drink more than women. Mm -hmm. Consequences of underage drinking is that it leads to addiction. Anyway, you guys talk to me. What are you guys' thoughts? Mm -hmm. Scripture says, Proverbs 20 and 1, it says, wine is a mocker, and strong drink is raging, and they that partake thereof are unwise. Mm -hmm. That's powerful right there, somebody. That's I'm over it. You know, that little wine that you might want, feel that you can drink with dinner, you better let that, you better let that alone. Mm -hmm. Come on with it. A little after dinner, a little after dinner, hot toddy. You better let that alone. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to be drinking no wine. I'm I'm sorry. I'm just gonna come right on out with it. Sir. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Elder, wine. Elder, what is it? Hot, hot, what now? Hot toddy. Hot toddy. <laughs> yeah. The saints, saints know exactly what you're talking about. Hot toddy. Leave it alone. Yeah. Come yeah. out from among them and yeah. be ye separate, saith the Lord. Be ye holy. Don't feel, let us not forget about being holy before God. Oh my goodness. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Sister D is pointing out. Come on. I'm, I'm loving the children of God. Y'all getting it. Yeah. Follow the money trail. That's Follow it. the money trail. Because yeah. I just read you guys some statistics. Yeah. And they said, we got we to gotta make sure nobody dies of COVID. We keeping you safe. 
So we are gonna keep you in the house so that nobody get infected. We don't want you to die. That's what they said. So why are you selling alcohol? Right. Mm -hmm. Why are you allowing illicit drugs in the street? Come on, y'all. Come on, wake up. Yeah. There's a whole lot of people making money from all of that. All these gas stations. Some of y'all, oh, this is wonderful. We got more gas stations. You think they want to sell gas? <laughs> no, no, no. Every one of them gas stations, what do they have attached to them? Big sign, liquor. 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 Yeah, man. And if we really want to take our community back, because I'm wondering why we don't have any thriving grocery stores, fresh fruit, you, fresh fruit markets in our communities. But you can get liquor. Oh, man. Every you can get hot Cheetos. I'm messing with the young people right now. <laughs> Takis. Anything unhealthy for you is readily accessible to you. Come on, y'all want Black Lives Matter? Y'all want Mexican Lives Matter? You want Arabian Lives Matter? Who else? You want Asian Lives to Matter? You want White Lives Matter too? You want all of them to matter? Well, let's talk about Black Lives Matter. Why do we have such quick access to everything that will kill us? You think that's an exact accident? You thought it was a coincidence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Because when there's no economic base, now I'm giving you guys my educator hat. When there's no economic base in a place, then there is no flourishing of economic development or jobs. And where there's no economic development or jobs or career or life purpose, um, when we say, some people get a job, some people have a career. Careers normally denote your purpose. So when you don't have that going on, it, it leads to depression. And guess what the devil wants? He's right there when you get depressed. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. When I would do good, evil always present. Yes. And so notice that all of the, they say, well, it's, it's racist medical care because you don't put them in our community. You, you, could, you could put the hospital anywhere you wanted to put it. Right. You chose where you put it. And then blame us for not getting care. So notice how the Lord is dealing with addiction. Type it in the screen, people of God, addiction. Because mm -hmm. what the spirit wanted to bring out was the idea of addiction. How it's not of God. Yes, yes. Let me get. Let me just give them a, a couple more elders. Oh, whoa, whoa! We can't do a couple more. My bad. I okay. didn't know it was eight fourteen. Yeah, let me say this one more one thing. Pastor. I have no idea. Sorry about that, y'all. Can hold on one second. Can those of you who have not had an opportunity to give, can you text B two EXP to seven seven nine seven seven? If you're connected to the Champion Center. Make sure on the drop down that you give there. If you're connected to Bethesda Southeast, can you drop down and give there? And if it's just general, like you're just giving a free will offer, just put it in the general. Um, looking for the Lord to bless because we have something special on the way. We want to now push the word of God on regular TV. I'm just putting it out there to y'all. Yes, yes. This COVID-19 has shown me we need to be on the airs. We need to be on the air to where everyone can access it because some of our seniors, they ain't on Facebook. So we need to just get on regular air. Go ahead, Elder Grizz, uh, Elder Randolph, sorry. Yeah, another version of that scripture, another uh, translation of Elder Grigsby says, wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Um, it's interesting also, Pastor, that, that you, you were saying to this, the fact that the things that are good for you cost an arm and a leg. The stuff that can kill you is a dime a dozen. You can get it, you can get it anywhere. It is very cheap. You watch your alcohol commercials that show people having a good time, drinking, doing the mojito, whatever, 
And then in small print it says, drink responsibly. Really, you, like that's gonna happen, right? <laughs> drink drink responsibly, okay. Yeah, yeah we're go, we gonna do that, sure we are. But but it, it's all it's all a deception. <laughs> It's it's all a, it's all a deception, and people are falling for that, and it's costing people their lives. It's costing people their families. Yes. I, I listen. I don't mean no harm. I'll go on and say it because it come on my mind. I just assume since I'm teaching Bible class, it must be from God. But me and Lady Net, we went someplace. She's sitting behind me, behind this screen. She can attest to it. And it was it was it was a whole lot of people there that that said that they were leaders and pastors and stuff. And they had two two bowls at this get together. Two bowls. One bowl had punch, mm. and the other bowl had what somebody called the good stuff. Uh, uh. Guess what bowl went empty first? <laughs> the good stuff. Ned, am I telling the truth? <laughs> she said she ain't in it. <laughs> and and I want listen. To these people who normally look real stern and stuff. They was they were smiling. I'm wondering what's going on. I'm like, well, everybody's so happy. Everybody's so happy. <laughs> and then afterward, act like they didn't know. So so here are people of God. Listen, we have uh, quite a few of you on here. Can you just delay your bedtime just for five minutes? Just five minutes, guys, because this point is so important and I want to leave on a strong point. So if you, if you, if you haven't liked and shared already, please like and share again. I know this is a long Bible study. We've been teaching for an hour and a half now, but that just shows you how passionate we are with it. Elders, this scripture, this woe, is what we need to end with. And tomorrow for the minister's Bible, so excuse me, the minister's prayer time at eight o'clock. By the way, if you liked the, that, that Zoom code, you, you need to reach out to us, uh, uh, email Bethesda Experience at, g, at uh, gmail.com to get the code. If you'd like to pray with us, we're coming together as ministers tomorrow at eight o'clock to pray. Watch this, Isaiah 29.1. Woe to Ariel, to Ariel. The city where David dwelt, add ye year to year, let them kill sacrifices. Woe to Ariel. Only place you're going to find this in scripture. Mm -hmm. What is Ariel? It is Zion. It is Jerusalem. He uses, God uses the term Ariel here. So look at my commentary. Unfilled commentators misunderstand the mystery of the use of Ariel here for Zion or Jerusalem. Some see the etymological definition as lion of God or lioness of God, and others understand it as the altar of burning. However, it is both. The Holy Spirit showed me that. It's both. The people see themselves as lions of God, but need to make themselves into an altar of burning. The children of God saw themselves as the lion of God. But why he, the reason why he called out Ariel, he was saying, but you need to make yourself into an altar of burning. What is an altar of burning is getting hot for prayer. It's getting hot for the things of God. It's not about you pounding your chest. I'm the lion of God. No, 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 no. You need to be the altar of burning, yes. which means something has to die. We ain't talking about lighting incense now. We're talking about a place of sacrifice. He said, my people need to become a place of sacrifice. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, from the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Ariel, woe to Ariel. Woe to the place where David dwell. Mm -hmm. It's time for you to go year to year and to now sacrifice the sacrifice that I call for. 
Elder Randolph, I'll give you word, and then uh, we'll let Bishop Grisby close us out with his last word and prayer. Thank God for all of you. Uh, remember, because we are in the shutdown mode this Sunday, we will be all live streaming. We are, however, preparing as a church for parking lot services, which is getting our equipment together, and also for life groups in person, outside with social distancing, because God did put some grace, even in that decree, because it does allow for us to be outside. It doesn't allow for us to be inside. So we will be having some life groups outside so we can look at each other, um, and we'll do them on our sites. Uh, Elder Randolph, and then uh, Grigsby, close us out. Very simply, let us put ourselves on the altar. Let's start by putting ourselves on the altar, throwing ourselves on the mercy of God, seeking his face, praying as we've never prayed before in these tough times. Their society needs us. There are still people out there who need to know Jesus Christ as their savior. And we are, and we are that bridge to them from us to, from God to them. We are that bridge. We have that responsibility to still reach people for Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Well, Elder Randolph, uh, I want to leave with this point. Uh, let us remain humble before the Lord. Uh, see so many in these times, days and times that with that bold attitude and I see a sense of entitlement in these times all, also. I uh, see it a lot, especially among a lot of our young people. They feel like something is owed to them. They have that sense of entitlement, uh, that bold attitude, and that's going to get you in trouble. We need to make, make sure that we stay humble before our God and recognize that he is the one that saved us, and we belong to him. And uh, the scripture that came to me, uh, lay aside every weight and sin that so easily beset us. Oh, yes. Lay aside the weight of wine. Lay aside that weight of cigarettes. Lay aside that weight of the stuff, anything that's going to lead you to sin. That's what a weight is. It's something that's going to lead you to sin. Oh, yes. Come all the way. Be all the way on the Lord's side. Our time is near. We see the signs of the end times. We see uh, this pandemic that's in the land. We're so close to the tribulation that some of the tribulation things we see little uh, precursors of things that's going to be happening in the last days. Israel's a nation again, surrounded by all enemies. We need to walk circumspectly. We need to be humble. I was telling my, my children this. I sent them a text on the other day that we need to make sure that we are in tune with God. we got to pray as never before in these times that we live in right now. just want to tell the saints that. Oh, yes. And I, I really believe that we're, we're, we're close to the time. I know that we're, end of, we're at the end of the church age. So let us stay humble and let us continue to seek God. Let us continue to build upon our relationship with God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you right now. We thank you for the people of God. And Lord, we thank you for this Bible class that we've been in tonight, this study. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you will bless your people in this time. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would take away every disappointment. Lord, I, I, I feel and I've felt it for a while that some of the saints of God are disappointed in the time that we live in. But Lord, help, help us to remember that you're in control. You're in control. Everything that's going on, you're in control. You can stop anything. You can speak and the pandemic will be over, but you're in control. Oh Lord, take away every disappointment, Lord. Enlighten the heart. Make glad the heart of your people, oh God. Bless them and help them and strengthen them. And Lord, before we leave this Bible study tonight, we rebuke all manner of sickness. We rebuke the perilous pestilence in the land. We rebuke cancer. We come against it in the name of Jesus. We rebuke diabetes and high blood pressure. We rebuke these things that the doctors said that there's no cure for. Lord, we come against the coronavirus. We come against it, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you get us out of this. Take us out of this. Take it away, Lord. And bless your people, oh God. And we know that you're going to do that, Lord. We ask it, Lord, right now. 
Bless every family, bless every household, meet their needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Uh, grant increase, increase in finances, increase in faith. Hallelujah. Increase, oh God. Help your people to walk in the overflow of your blessings, oh God. Lord, we ask it right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless our pastor. Bless Lady Net. Bless our first family. Bless our ministers and our leaders in our church. Help us, oh God, and bless us and bless us, Lord. We just need your blessings and your help. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you, children of God, and we thank God for you. We know this was a long Bible study, and by the way, it wasn't even over, which means that I'll have to finish it up on Tuesday. I pray to see you this Sunday for worship, and remember, you are, you are a champion. God bless you, in Jesus' name.